be done in a semi-recumbent position in bed, in which case the angle of tube insertion needs to be adjusted accordingly. The length of the tube is chosen by measuring the distance from the angle of the mouth to the earlobe and from the earlobe to the xiphoid process. Document the first visible measurement mark at the tip of the nose in order to detect any future tube displacement. If appropriate, hand the patient a glass of water. Lubricate the tube with gel. Gently into the chosen nostril, advancing it straight back into the nose, not upwards. The tube should track horizontally over the hard and soft palate, at which point the patient will feel it at the back of the throat. Ask the patient to hold a small sip of water in the mouth and bring the chin onto the chest. This results in a smoother curvature for the tube to follow through the naso and hypopharynx into the upper esophagus. Gently advance the tube while the patient is swallowing. If the patient starts coughing, immediately withdraw the tube 2-3 to three centimeters and try again once the patient has settled. When the tube has been inserted into the esophagus, ask the patient to take further small sips of water while advancing the tube slowly and steadily into the stomach. The correct tube position is checked by aspirating gastric content and confirming a low pH on pH indicator strips or paper. Litmus paper is not a sufficient testing method. The readings can be confused if the patient is on acid through the mouth. In this case, withdraw the tube in the standards organization for medical device connections state that all connections used in enteral feeding and for the administration of medication